Hey guys, so um, today's video is on a very different topic to what I normally talk about. I am really interested in Korean media. Now, one of the most popular TV shows on Korean media right now is Produce 101. The premise of that show is 101 trainees from various entertainment companies across Korea come together to this one program and in the hopes that they can debut in an 11-man group for one year. When you're in Korea, um, being in uh, these idol groups essentially is basically your ticket to not just fame, but actually making music, being a performer. It's such a prominent thing within Korean media um, that to get to this height in terms of um, music is something that a lot of people dream about. So when you watch this TV show and they compete using um, with um, performances, choosing songs, competing with each other, it makes for really entertaining TV. Now, let's talk about the basis of this because it's a reality show. Okay, and what does reality mean? Reality shows drama. Just like a drama show, like a movie, a thriller, you need suspense, you need something that pulls the viewer in and makes them want to watch the show. So today I want to actually talk about that aspect of reality TV um, in line with Produce 101. Because um, there's been a lot of talk lately about, you know, the devil editing, the evil editing. Now, just a disclaimer here, I don't completely agree with it, but I understand both sides of the story. So I want to talk about the other side of the story. Now obviously this program has had a lot of controversies lately um, in regards to some of the contestants being outed of the competition based on either health reasons or from a negative history whether it's bullying or sexual harassment. Then there's your other controversies where you know like the the company Mnet the TV station um, is having like body checks like extreme body checks and basically humiliating audience members yeah that shit that ain't, that ain't cool that ain't, that is not cool but um you know at the same time um, when a lot of people complain about um, the the evil editing and I know that a lot of international fans we complain about it I think we really need to step back and actually look at the fact that what this is and Yes, we. you have your biases, you have your whoever you love. Um, and, you know, with Korean culture, with K-pop, there's a humongous fandom and people get really, really into it way more than I, find, I think Western um, musicians ever get. Um, to the point there's like an obsession and I guess that's what the concept of the Sesang, of the sesang, sesang um, fan um, becomes because it becomes quite obsessive. Um, but you know, we've got to actually pull back and say, you know, just because we like, we are absolutely in love with them, and yes, I'm in love with certain members on Project 101, Takara Kenta, Song Wu, Daniel Kang, So Song Hyuk. Yeah, I love them. Um, you know, not everyone is going to feel the same way. And I think that we actually need to like take ourselves out of the situation and understand that, you know, not everyone feels the same way. Now, Let's get into the nitty gritty about this. It's a TV station. What is a TV station? Yes, it is media. But what also it is, is that it's a business. And with a business, you want to make some money. So, this is a TV show that's trying to make a boy group. So let's go to the music industry. Again, they want to make some money. So obviously, Mnet are probably going to want to put people that they want into the work group because chances are they think this person's gonna make some money so let's get into screen time you have 101 contestants on a TV show in the space of two hours every week for 11 episodes tell me how the heck do you fit in every contestant fairly Including time for the judges, including time for the competitions, the performances, you know, it's really difficult. And on top of that, if you show everyone on their good side, chances are, is it going to make riveting television? Probably not. 
we're probably gonna switch up and be bored because nobody's being extra, nobody is being lit, nobody is going crazy, there is no drama, we're gonna get bored. That's the reality. TV, we feed off drama. So when people complain about Dell editing, they do not realize at the same time. You know, this is what's making us watch the television show in the first place. Because at the same time, you know, when Mnet are actually showing the screen time of someone or trying to put someone in a good light, um, it's like people don't notice that and people kind of like ignore that and focus on the negatives. Um, the best example I can think of right now is in the latest episode, episode 7. So Samuel Kim, um, one of the contestants, was really popular for Han, but it turns out he was really popular with international fans, and international fans um, were able to find a loophole to um, to vote. Um, and basically Mnet tried to stamp that out um, by resetting the voting system. Um, and this is because you they consider the Korean voters to be the national producers. So when you have the international producers, it's not really national anymore. Um, they want to focus again in Korea because this is who the audience, the main audience, will be initially. So we've got that situation going right there. And because of that, they reset the votes. Um, Samuel Kim's um, ranking actually went really down. He went from like number two I think, to like 17, 19, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but quite drastic in that way. And a lot of people are complaining, like, oh my gosh, we know why is it like this? But at the same time, you know that Mnet like him because they put him as the first person to get an A in the initial episode. But on top of that, too, in the previous episode, they kind of gave him a sob story. Um, fair enough, because he would be quite, you know, devastated to be center in a performance and still come last place. So, you know, they showed him crying and that and, you know, pulling in the heartstrings and hopefully getting um, viewers to vote for him. So, you know, there's a bit of good there, I guess. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that when you are at a TV station and you are hiring people for a TV show, you want people that will give you the views. If it's for a music show and they're going to make a boy group, you probably want to get people that will make money afterwards as well. Um, it's all a business decision. You've got to step back for a moment and outside of your like, oh my god, this is my bias, and actually think, this is also a business. Like, it's unfair, it ain't great, yes, I want everyone to have screen time, but guess what, that's not how reality TV works. Gotta accept the situation and move along with it. And you know what, if you ain't happy, switch off that TV, switch off that Mnet, because ultimately, by you watching the program tells Mnet, hey, these people feed off this, they like this, we're gonna continue the charade. It seems a little bit like logic, don't you think? I think that's one thing that we invest ourselves in TV shows, but we forget that there is the other side of the story, which is a business. And if we were to remember that, I think it would make us understand TV shows more. And as difficult as it is, we need to be reminding of that. Even more so because this is a Korean TV show. And we often as outsiders, as foreigners, you know, we don't fully understand Korean culture and necessarily all the little workings of it that really do interplay into this. That we may have a problem with it, but there's a very specific culture here at play. And regardless of whether it's wrong or right, um, that's for Koreans to understand themselves and for them to judge whether it's wrong or right and how to fix the situation if they see it as a problem. And we as outsiders simply have to just shut up, accept it. We can have our opinions, but you know, like at the end of the day, like what right do we have? Because, you know, this is not our country. We're just the outsiders watching it and enjoying this aspect of Korean culture. And it just goes out saying, you know, there's no need to like basically act like we're superior just because, you know, like this is our bias. Like, you just go accept it. And at the end of the day, these trainees know they're coming into this program, um, into the show, uh, basically to, they know Mnet's own got evil editing. So, when you got a program like this, 
um, essentially, they know what's going to happen. They know what they're signing up to. They're going to take responsibility. At the end of the day, it's their chance to hopefully debut, hopefully their chance to be shown at screen time and be given the best possible opportunities to pursue their dreams and be successful. So, you know, if there's one thing you can take away from this is that if you've got your faves, you know they're, you know who they are now and you know who to support because when time comes for them to debut, they've got your support. And that's you know ultimately what they're looking for. So we've got to look at this in the long run as well. Alright, so um, thanks for watching my video. If you've got any questions or comments below, leave them down below. But of course, always play nice and let's have a good discussion. Um, but you know, again, this is a really fun TV show to watch. Absolute, I'm um, absolute produce 101 trash right now. But it's been a pleasure to talk about this, and I'll see you around. Also once again, just because I can as well, and in my biases too. Kara Kenta, Aung San Woo, Daniel Kang, So Sang Hyuk, Tsun Sa Tae Bak, Joa Yo. See ya!